Speed now. Coronavirus facts, not fear, begins now. Hey, it is finally Friday. Good morning to you. Thanks for joining us for Newsfeed Now. We are all about providing you with facts and not fear. And as we roll into a weekend, we all need those facts. We all need some upbeat attitudes. We've got a song that may just be enough to inspire you a little bit later. We're going to talk to the author of that song live on the program. But first, let's get into the numbers. The latest numbers in the United States, 1.4 million cases and more than 84,000 people have died from the virus. At least 48 states will be partially reopening by early next week. High school graduates are getting a unique ceremony on Friday. Facebook and Instagram plan to honor America's class of 2020 with a live stream event that Oprah will host. She's going to give the commencement speech. Little Lies X in the Old Town Road along with Miley Cyrus performing. There will be celebrity appearances by Jen Garner, Aquafina, and Simone Biles. There are at least 302,000 coronavirus deaths worldwide. We were just talking about 85,000 of them here in the United States. This according to Johns Hopkins University. And health officials say the threat is not going away just yet. Here's John Lawrence. The coronavirus might be here for good. The World Health Organization says it's possible COVID-19 may never go away. And there's no word on when a vaccine will be ready. We can't give an answer to that because it takes time to do these studies, these clinical trials, to see if it's safe and effective. This comes as most of the U.S. is lifting at least some restrictions and reopening businesses. There needs to be a balance of minimizing the risk of resurgence, protecting people while getting the economy going back up back again. It's not public health or economy. It has to be both. On Thursday, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention published guidelines to help with the process, but... There's not a lot of specifics here, and some of it seems very ad hoc, you know, sort of do it if you can, if you can't, you know, it's okay. I was surprised by this. The CDC also issued a warning about a multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children, or MISC, which may be associated with COVID-19 infection. Just like its name suggests, it's a disease that can lead to severe inflammation in the body and even in the heart, in which case it can be deadly. The syndrome has been reported across Europe and in at least 18 states. I'm John Lawrence reporting. All right, John, thanks. The House will vote on a $3 trillion aid package today. It would allocate funding for state and local governments, testing, and a new round of direct payments to Americans. Here's Jesse Tenor. Let my people vote. Louisiana's former treasurer, Senator John Kennedy, is pushing the Senate to act on his latest bill. It would allow state and local governments to use the $150 billion Congress has already approved for coronavirus response for general operating expenses. If you don't like it, you can chew it up, spit it out, and step on it and vote no in front of God and country. But if you like it, you can. The president is reportedly interested in Kennedy's plan, but Florida's former governor and fellow Republican, Senator Rick Scott, has repeatedly blocked Kennedy's efforts. And now we are asking Floridians to pay for the incompetency of governors like Andrew Cuomo. Kennedy says the bill prohibits officials from diverting the money to shore up pension funds, but Scott isn't buying it. Regardless of whether we're removing existing guardrails or talking about completely new funding, both actions would result in a blank check bailout for states. Other senators have proposed an extra $500 billion for state and local governments, while House Democrats, like California Congressman Mike Levin, are pushing for an extra trillion. Republican governors, Democratic governors, the uh, League of Cities, the uh, county executives, the state executives all agree uh, that this is really necessary. Kennedy says the House plan has no chance of passing the Senate, but his bill may be able to pass both chambers. It'll make a difference if the president supports it. Let's go live now to Washington, D.C. Jesse joins us. Jesse, I'm interested in all the money that is being thrown around, millions, billions, trillions of dollars. Uh, it seems like that, that maybe Washington looks at this as a huge problem and we've got to find some answers. Is it going to be enough money to find those answers? 
Yeah, that's still a question that remains to be fully answered, and that's the reason why Republicans are very skeptical to vote on this bill. So when all the other previous legislation has been voted on, there's been large bipartisan support, just a couple stragglers from either party that didn't vote for it. But this time, it sounds like it'll be pretty much down party lines and even some Democrats moving to vote with Republicans because they feel like it is too large. This is 1,800-plus pages of a bill, and like you said, this is three trillion dollars and so this would double what's already been given um, to Americans and so you're gonna hear a lot about that with the debate today right now there is votes happening but it's more procedural they haven't gotten to the actual legislation yet and so um, we'll see what happens but it is expected to pass the house but for some of the reasons that I just mentioned that it's expected to be pretty much dead on arrival to the Senate when we talk about the stimulus and we talk about the money that has already been given to Americans is the thought process on this new bigger bill that Americans need more money or is a thought process that the economy needs to be jump started through the money that could be spent yeah, exactly. So right now they're saying Americans need more money to make sure that they jumpstart that economy. And so right now with a lot of states reopening, um, a lot of businesses from what we've been hearing are still weighing whether to reopen because they're saying, you know, should we reopen? Will we actually have the customer base um, to you know, keep that up? Yeah. And so um, that's what a lot of lawmakers have really been trying to weigh. But they've been hearing, we've been hearing um, you know, that they've been speaking with governors, mayors, things of that nature, and all of them have been telling them that they need more money um, to make this happen. All right, Jesse Tenura, thank you from Washington, D.C. Appreciate you taking the time. At restaurants across the country, they're beginning to reopen. Many are facing another hardship, though, not just a lack of customers, a lack of meat and the increased prices. One popular staple in Nashville, Tennessee, is forced to take a menu a main menu, a main item rather, off their menu. Here's Stassi Olmos. Here is our cooking process. At Ronnie Q's Barbecue in Dixon, they're just grateful to have a drive through during this pandemic. We start out every morning for about 53 whole chickens, and then from there we got, we got ribs on. But there's one popular item not on the menu today. If beef haven't been at a good price, you will see beef on the grill. Beef brisket. I have to make a profit before I overcharge my customers. I just discontinue that item until it starts going back down. Prim buys meat from three distributors. Right now, he says beef prices are up a dollar per pound. Whoever the cheapest, that's who I buy from. But right now, when it comes to beef, everybody's running uh, three fifty-five a pound, three eighty a pound on beef, and that's just too much. Several meat processing plants across the country have shut down or cut operations after outbreaks of COVID-19 significantly slowed production lines. Experts say it's not so much a meat shortage, but an upset in the supply chain. According to wholesale price tracker BeefIt'sWhat'sForDinner.com, the price of some ground beef has tripled in the last two months. It's a real big increase. Just for example, if I buy that beef at three eighty nine. And on my beef sandwiches, I get eight seventy five. I would have to move my price up at least ten dollars just on a sandwich, and people just not going to buy that. Wendy's taking triple and double stack hamburgers off their menus in some restaurants last week. Prim says even the price of pork has doubled. It haven't went so far that I can't handle it. I was told by one of the vendors next week price on pork was going to be two oh two a pound. For most, buying in bulk to cut costs is what's keeping the grill going. As long as I, you know, give people good customer service and give them their money's worth, I feel they will be okay. Reporting in Dixon, Stassi Olmos, News 2. Thanks so much. Let's go to Josh Breslow. Josh, we talked about restaurants opening a couple weeks ago. Tennessee opened about two weeks ago. Nashville, Memphis did not open. Now that those areas are, are slowly starting to open. But then there's another one. You know, it's like a left-right combination if you're in the boxing ring. You can open, but you don't have to meet. Yeah, so imagine, the thing I like about that story is imagine this is your well-being, but you care more about your actual customers and how they're doing and making sure that they have the money to survive to be able to you know, take this item off your menu rather than charging them more because that was the whole thing there is he would have to charge more to sell that item. So it's great to see that these businesses, even though they are slowly reopening, still care about their customers and treat them like people.
as we uh, take a look at some of that barbecue on the grill, which looks fantastic. How are other restaurants doing right now? What has the sentiment been there in Tennessee of how things are going? I mean, right now, for the most part, things seem to be doing okay. We're still at the 50% capacity, not just in Tennessee, but also uh, across Nashville. We actually allowed restaurants to open here on Monday, so a little bit later than the rest of the state. But for the most part, no major concerns. We haven't seen anyone cited for doing any anything incorrectly. And we're actually seeing a lot of people that are going out to these restaurants, obviously practicing that social distancing. And uh, earlier today, we actually saw a rooftop open on one of the Broadway bars, but oh, they're wow. trying to keep people obviously uh, away from each other and socially distanced. But yeah, we actually saw the rooftops there opening on one of the bars, and that's going to keep happening over the next few days. Does that indicate that maybe the restaurants that have a bar live music aspect are getting closer to reopening? And I know that's very important there on Broadway as far as the entertainment district is concerned. Yeah, I mean, that's obviously the hope is that somewhere down the line they can do that. But right now, the mayor has said he doesn't want that live music just yet. That's part of a later phase of the plan. So it is going to be a while, probably another month or so until that's possible. But a lot of these places are going to reopen and they will just, you know, have people eating and treating the bars like a restaurant rather than a bar and restaurant with that live music that obviously Nashville is known for. Josh always does a great job. Josh, thank you so much. Looks like you got your hair cut. I'm jealous. I mean, I don't want to reveal anything, but yeah, I got one. I can't. I got, I got a curl right here that just won't go away. My hair is so long. Well, I can't wait to see your full mullet in about a month. Hey, it's getting there. I'm not turning around, but yeah. it's getting there. <laughs> Josh Breslow, thanks, buddy. Appreciate Absolutely. you taking the time. If you've been in business since 1911, you know how to handle the hard times. You get creative. Bill Woods has a New Orleans classic that's still on the menu, and it's being served up in a new style. Let's see if this boy, baby got some get up and go. The guy in the golf cart. Let's see, we'll number all these parking spots. His name is Justin Kennedy. Oh yeah, we'll get there. He's taking a test drive. I think that might work. Not on a New Orleans golf course. Justin just teed off. I'm gonna wheel this bad boy out to you. In the parking lot of Parkway Bakery and Tavern. Yeah, I picked this golf cart up from a guy in Mississippi for a good deal. He was actually a Parkway customer. <laughs> After you call in your order, you just pull up into your parking spot. I'll run it out to you in this bad boy. Then wait for the car hop, cruising in from the 18th hole. He's a caddy carrying your po' boy. Shrimp po' boy dress? Yeah, now that's the kind of efficiency that would be the envy of even... Amazon. They can learn a thing or two. Justin's got no reservations about serving shrimp po' boys to a party of 200. They're health care workers. Organized by Louisiana's Al Copeland Foundation. With Be a Hero, Think a Hero, we are trying to help our health care heroes and our community. Our health care heroes are saving lives. Yeah, so I think this will work. On four wheels, here comes the new normal. Po' boys chauffeured to your taste buds. Order up, pull in the block. From a New Orleans guy who's got an idea. We'll give it a shot. It's already a hole in one. We're ready to roll. I hope this golf cart is. All right, let's go live to Bill Wood. Now, Bill, you mentioned it. It is a golf cart hop, and they are bringing po' boys exactly when you need them to you the best way possible. Uh, when is this process going to be where he's going to start cooking for health care workers? He has actually already started that era, and that was how he kicked off. They were the first reservation on this new process. So the healthcare workers came in a little bit earlier this week, maybe more on the way, 200 of them. And here's what they got. They got these shrimp po' boys, as we call them, dressed, ready to go, and they love them. And this is working out so well, this whole technique with the golf cart, that Justin figures, even though the city has said restaurants here can open up with 25% capacity, with everybody spaced out, social distancing, He's not going for that, at least not initially. This golf cart technique, this golf cart business, in from the course, in from, uh, from a guy in Mississippi who's a Parkway customer, as Justin said, he's going to stick with it because it's really working. And he figures that he has driven the golf cart in the last week probably about 60 miles. So he could have driven from New Orleans all the way to Baton Rouge. Not sure how many golf how many holes on the golf course that would be. He's not even a golfer. He just loves the golf cart. Uh, I, I'm in the market for a golf cart myself, but I don't know if I'd be delivering shrimp. 
How is the food? The food here is spectacular. As I said, this place has been around. It's, it's a legendary New Orleans po' boy shop. Uh, when President Obama was president, he and his wife, the First Lady Michelle, and their two girls came here, made a stop here, and absolutely loved it and wanted to know all of Justin's secret chef ideas. So it's a place where celebrities and stars and politicians and, and everyday people who just walk in off the street in New Orleans all dine in style. For now, they're dining out in the parking lot yeah. with Justin delivering with the golf cart. Are and, they, and if you are, need a golf cart, Aaron, I, I know a guy, you got a, you, you got a guy who knows a guy, and you know me. Yeah, I, well, then that would work. Go ahead and send it, uh, just send it due north. I think it'll get here. Before you go, how is this restaurant doing uh, with the, the limited capacity, social distancing, uh, and, and are restaurants in New Orleans open at any capacity yet? Restaurants are open for takeout starting tomorrow. The city is broadening the, the stay-at-home mandate and allowing restaurants to serve 25% of their customers. You have to make a reservation. You have to give your name and phone number. They have to be able to trace you and track you if, if there becomes a need to. Obviously, business is, is really hurting. Business is really down, but they are they are maintaining, they're, they're hanging in there, and, and the best part about it is the food, look at it, it's probably better than ever. How, how about that? I'm, I'm delivering this, I'm chauffeuring this to your taste buds. I mean, have you invented taste vision yet? Because I know smell of vision doesn't work. <laughs> I have. These okay. shrimp are the best. The bread is from uh, a secret, legendary New Orleans bakery. People really know this place, and this is the place they come. It's called Parkway Bakery and Tavern. So you can dine on a po' boy, and if you get a little thirsty, you can quench your thirst as well. All right. Bill Wood, thanks, buddy. Appreciate you taking the time from the Big Easy. During the outbreak, we've seen several stories of people coming up with creative ideas, whether it's to stay busy or to inspire. But a pastor in Little Rock, Arkansas, is using his voice to uplift and encourage others. Here's Rochelle Turner with the story. That's Pastor Drew Klein, and he's singing a song he wrote called Maker of the Waves. Well, just like everybody else, I'm struggling. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm fearful at times. I'm wondering what the future is going to look like. Klein is the pastor at South City Church in Little Rock. During the second week of the coronavirus, he says he thought about the story of Jesus in the book of Mark, chapter 4. And the chapter says, who is this that the wind and waves obey him? You know, and so I just, that story was on my heart and my mind. Don't give away. That scripture inspired him to use his voice and create this virtual choir. And I couldn't help but think about the fact that in the middle of this storm we're facing with the coronavirus, that God is in control. Pastor Darius Nelson at St. Mark Baptist Church in Little Rock and members of the choir join the ensemble. I think it's for people that are going through, there's some people that are having mental struggles dealing with this thing. It's just one of the many creative ideas during this outbreak. The song has over 8,000 views and has been shared hundreds of times. The response has been overwhelming to the song, to the message. A simple message that means so much. God uses people to do things in an extraordinary way and I think that uh, the collaboration the, the voices that we brought together I think it was just a great kind of godsend for this season that we're in right now reporting in Little Rock I'm Rochelle Turner Rochelle thanks so much we've got Drew standing by before Drew you jump in here I want to play a little bit more of this song uh, Tim if we can switch over to this other computer I want you guys to hear a little bit more of this song the fog was rolling in. But Jesus was asleep, he's the maker of the waves. Maker of the waves, Drew now joins us. Drew, we're looking at some of the, this music video that you put together. First things first, before we get into the song, how much fun did you have? And how difficult was it to put so many different people onto a computer screen and in a time where we're social distancing? 
Yeah, well, it's funny uh, you asked that. I, I used to be in the music industry. I was in the music industry for almost 20 years, so I haven't done a whole lot since then. I still do something here and there for producers in Nashville, but anytime I get a chance to make music, I love it. And so as I got into this process again, uh, man, my heart just began to beat again. I just, I, I love the process. It took several weeks from working with, you know, of course, everybody's on lockdown, so we're having to work through email and the internet and uh, that was not the hard part. The hard part was getting the choir all together <laughs> and assemble. You know, we had to literally pull the audio off each phone track, mix it into the music, and then come back and you know put the video together. But I have a great team of guys around town that helped me with that, so that was good. So many of us are trying to come up with different ideas, whether it's entertaining kids, finding ways to teach kids, which I can be honest with you is not the easiest thing in the world without no. teachers right now. But when you knew that you had this on your heart and you wanted to inspire people. How long did it take you to put those thoughts onto paper? Well, you know, it, it started with me personally, just kind of praying, spending time with God. And, and I was thinking about this story from Mark 4, uh, which is a story about Jesus on a boat with his disciples, which you might remember the disciples are mostly sailors. They're mostly fishermen. They ought to know how to handle themselves in a storm, in a boat. And yet the Bible says they were afraid, very afraid. So they go to, to get Jesus. Jesus is asleep. He's not afraid. He's asleep. They wake him up and he says, where's your faith? Then he calms the storm. And so uh, after he calms the storm, the disciples say, who is this that the wind and waves obey? And I, that was just on my heart. And I kept thinking, you know, this is a storm that's raging in this COVID-19 environment. But we don't have to be afraid. We know the maker of the waves. We know the one who can calm the storm. And so that's kind of where my heart was. And it, the song came in about 15 or 20 minutes. I wrote the really? whole thing in 20 minutes probably, yeah. Uh, what has been the response so far? Again, you have connections within the musical world, uh, a part of the, uh, the popular Christian artist group, New Song. What has been the, the, the process? Have you been able to get this out yet so that people can hear it, or is this kind of the first wave to use a pun? Yeah, honestly, Aaron, I didn't plan on really kind of putting it out. I, honestly, on my heart, my wife and I talked about you know, there's some costs associated with producing something like this, and we had to think about what is this something we want to do, and we, we said, yeah, we, we just wanted to encourage people. So as far as the traditional way of producing it and uh, releasing it, we're probably not doing that on, you know, radio stations around the country, but God is seeming to use this song, and so we are making it available on iTunes and Spotify and other distribution channels here pretty soon. It's going through a process right now, but when it is available... Any proceeds that, that come through the sale of this song will go to the Arkansas Food Bank, which I'm sensitive to. Our church has a food pantry that we do every other mm. week, and, and so we see that every, every week people in need. So that's where we want this to be most felt impacted. Well, and, and one thing before you go that I, that I want to kind of chat on when we're talking about a song like this, and where we are is we'll get through this together. And, and what I yep. think is unique about this is your church partnered with another church in Little Rock in central Arkansas. So you guys are coming together in this effort of meeting mm -hmm. people where they're needed. Yeah, it's a big part of who we are as a church at South City. We were a multicultural, multi-generational church. And we've been saying this since we've uh, kind of started the church three years ago. We are better together. And it doesn't matter, you know, if it's, uh, I know we're sort of in a racially, uh, have a lot of tension right now based on different events and the COVID-19 thing. But the reality is we are better together. God has called us to be together as the body of Christ. And we need to make intentional efforts like this to show the world that that's the truth and love well. Very cool stuff. You heard him sing here. I can, I can attest. The dude can preach, too. I've been to his church before. <laughs> Drew, thank you so much. And I haven't told you this yet. I'm going to take the time now to tell you. Thanks for bringing Russ Taft to Central Arkansas. <laughs> One of my favorite all-time artists, and you were able to get him at your church. Thank you for that. It was yeah, a, that was a, mine a, too. a fantastic Sunday morning. Drew, thank you. We appreciate you taking the time here on News Feed Now. Bless you, brother. Thanks all for having right. me. All right. Let's listen to this song as we go to break. A little bit more inspirational music as we roll on. Hopefully, this will take you into a great weekend all across the nation. Thanks for watching News Feed Now. We'll see you Monday morning.